hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be talking about everything exclusively pumping related including my pump routine how to increase your milk supply and everything that you'll need to make your pumping journey easier so if you're interested just keep on watching and i have a huge disclaimer i am not a lactation consultant everything that i'm sharing with you in this video i either learned from my own research trial and error or other moms that have gone through the process as well so please take everything that you learn here with a grain of salt it may work for me but it may not work for you in my previous video i told you guys why i decided to exclusively pump and if you haven't watched that video already i will link it up in the cards but basically i was having lots of issues with my baby latching and staying awake while sleeping and due to that reason she wasn't gaining weight in the beginning like she should have so i decided that the easiest way for me to Number one, make sure she's getting enough weight was to just exclusively pump. And I have been pumping ever since, every single day. And she is growing, she's healthy, and she's happy. So the very first thing that you're going to need to make your exclusively pumping journey easier is a double electric breast pump. I use the Spectra S2, and I freaking love this pump. Um, I got it through my insurance, so if you are in the United States, or I don't know if other countries do this as well, but... It is covered through your insurance. They they cover the entire thing. Um, with the Spectra S2, it does need to be plugged up into the wall. However, I bought a battery pack that I use to make this pump more portable. If your insurance allows it or you're willing to pay a few extra dollars for it, you can get the Spectra S1, which looks the exact same as this, except it's pink. And it has a rechargeable battery, which is definitely needed if you're going to be exclusively pumping because you want to be able to move around freely and not be connected to a wall all the time. You're going to also need a hands-free pumping bra like this one. I bought it off of Amazon. I think it was between $20 to $30. I'll link it down below if I can find it for you. Um, having a pumping bra is a freaking game changer. When I first came home from the hospital, I was literally holding the bottles like this the entire time. And it's just like you can't do anything when you don't have a pumping bra. You're like you're holding the bottles to capture the milk, and then you're also trying to tend to your baby or do whatever else you need to do around the house, and it's just not convenient. So having that pumping bra definitely changes things. So if you don't have one, get you one, girl. You're gonna need it. So when it comes to exclusively pumping, you need to be drinking a lot of water, and by a lot, I mean I strive to drink at least a gallon of water a day. If you're the type of person that does not like to drink water or you don't like the taste of it, to mix things up, I do use body armor, which are these drinks right here. These things are also godsend. They are made with um, coconut water, so they're super hydrating. You can also drink coconut water as well in replacement of water or in addition to water. Um, they are very good for you. They keep you hydrated, which is definitely needed when exclusively pumping. Whenever I feel like my supply is dropping a little bit because I do average anywhere between 35 to 40 ounces a day. So whenever I notice that it drops, it drops below 35 ounces, I drink these things like crazy and they definitely help boost my supply. When you're breastfeeding, you also need to get an additional 500 calories per day. And I know firsthand that I can easily forget to eat throughout the day, especially when I'm taking care of the baby. I'm recording videos for YouTube, I'm handling things for my business. It is very easy to forget to eat. So you need to make sure that you're eating enough so that you can also continue to produce enough milk as well. So if you notice that your milk supply is going down, you can try drinking more to stay hydrated and maybe try eating, I don't know, an extra granola bar that's full of protein or whatever the case may be to just make sure you're getting enough calories throughout the day. I don't use many breastfeeding supplements, but one thing that I recommend that you definitely have on is the sunflower lecithin. This stuff is amazing whenever you have a clogged duct or you just feel like your milk is very sticky and you just want to be able to get your milk out faster. Sunflower lecithin is known for thinning your milk to make it less sticky, less sticky so that you're able to get your milk out much faster and it also helps to clear clogged ducts. So if you don't have this, I think you should also have this on hand because having a clogged duct is in inevitable. It will happen to you. I just recently got over a clogged duct as well as a milk, a milk blub and having this 
saved me. I do have Amazon Prime, so I could have easily gotten it in a day or two. But still, like having this on hand, especially when you feel a clog coming on, is definitely useful. And you will not regret buying this. And one of my favorite ways to increase your milk supply and to also help maintain your milk supply is power pumping. You guys, like I cannot stress the importance of power pumping. I try to power pump at least once a week to maintain my supply. Like I said before, whenever I notice that I'm having a dip, it's always I always do one of three things. That's either drink more, eat more, or power pump. Power pumping basically means that you pump for 20 minutes, you take a 10 minute rest, pump again for 10 minutes, take a 10 minute rest, and then pump again for another 10 minutes. So, so my milk recently basically just dropped in half because I had a milk bleb. If you don't know what a milk bleb is, it's basically a blister on your nipple that is full of milk, but it blocks the milk from coming out when you're pumping or breastfeeding. And let me just say it hurts like freaking hell. So I took it upon myself to pop the blister. Then I did a power pumping session over the course of that day. So instead of doing it for once a week, for when it happened, I actually did it, I think it was about three times that day. And let me tell you that my milk supply immediately went back up like the very next day. I went from my supply being cut in half to going back up to where it normally is. So whenever you're having an issue and your milk supply drops for whatever reason, you can't figure out what it is, power pumping definitely helps. And the reason why power pumping works so well because it mimics cluster feeding as if you were nursing. So when you're nursing your baby directly to your nipple, they do cluster feed and it makes it signals your body to produce more milk. So as I say that if you're ever having a drop in your supply or you just want to boost your supply in general, definitely try power pumping. Um, I, I would say start off with at least like maybe once a day or if you feel like you just need to drastically increase your supply, you can maybe try like two or three times a day. So you replace a normal pumping session with a power pumping session and you should start to see an increase within the next day. To increase your milk supply, you can also just increase your pump sessions in general. Um, when you're starting out with exclusively pumping, they recommend that you basically mimic the same schedule that you would as if you were nursing. So with a newborn baby, you're usually nursing anywhere from 8 to 12 times a day. So with exclusively pumping, you're pumping from anywhere between 8 to 12 times a day. But again, in my case, that was not feasible for me. It was not realistic and I just couldn't follow that schedule. So let's just say for instance, right now you're currently pumping six times per day, but you notice that you have a drop in supply. Try increasing to seven times a day to see if that helps boost it or just pump a little bit longer. With the Spectra S2, the pump automatically shuts down at 30 minutes. So you can try to go in an additional 10 to 15 minutes to see if that helps as well. And I usually do that in the mornings because my last pump of the night is usually around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And I don't pump again until 6 o'clock in the morning. So my very first pump of the day is usually about 45 minutes to just make sure that I'm completely empty. You can just try increasing your pumping session by adding a few extra minutes or add an extra pump throughout the day if you have the time. Another way to increase your milk supply is to try breastfeeding supplements. You can try the sunflower lecithin like I mentioned before or you can go through a brand like Legendary Milk or Milky Mama. They have so many different products on their websites that help increase breast milk and so many women rave about it. I personally haven't used it because I'm blessed with the oversupply already. However, I have been thinking about trying Legendary Milk simply to just increase the fattiness of my milk. So definitely give them a try. This video is not sponsored by them. I'm just mentioning it because in my Facebook group that I'm in for Breastfeeding Moms, which I will also link down below, they all rave about Legendary Milk or Milky Mama helping them increase their milk supply. And of course, another well-known tip to increase your milk supply is definitely um, eating oatmeal. And I tried this once, but I really didn't see a difference in my milk supply. But you never know it can work for you, so I would definitely say give it a try. And the last and final tip that I have for increasing your milk supply is definitely making sure that you're changing your pump parts regularly. Um, I will link below a chart that tells you when each individual part needs to be replaced. 
but I just recently replaced my duct bills on my pump because I noticed that the suction was not as strong as it was before. So definitely look into that. There's just there's multiple reasons that go into why your supply may be going down. Um, the first one that I always recommend is to make sure that you're drinking enough water. Check your your pump to make sure that your pump parts are working as they should, and then also make sure that you're eating enough. When it comes to handling and storing breast milk, I do follow the CDC guidelines, which for freshly pumped breast milk, it can stay out at room temperature for up to four hours. Um, milk in the refrigerator can last anywhere from four to six days, and milk that's in a freezer as a separate door it can last anywhere from six to 12 months. And I think it can last on a 12 month range if you have a deep freezer. But if you have a regular freezer that you constantly open on a daily basis, I would say the safe time frame is definitely six months. When I'm pumping, I usually try to give my baby at least one fresh bottle a day. So what I normally do is um, I'll make sure that when it's time for me to pump, that she's also ready for her next feeding. So what I'll do is I'll pump and then I'll take that milk from that feeding and I'll give her the three and a half ounces that she drinks and then all the re remaining milk goes to the refrigerator. I follow the pitcher method which is basically where you combine all of your milk from that day that you pump into a large container and then you use that milk to prep your bottles for the very next day. And this has been a game changer as well for me because I don't have to sit and wash like 20,000 bottles in one day after I'm done pumping because again I am a over supplier so whenever I have milk I need to store the milk in bottles and I just found that I was just washing way too many bottles and y'all it was just it was just too much so I decided to use the pitcher method again freaking game changer if you haven't tried it definitely try it It would definitely reduce the amount of bottles that you're washing per day so one more tip that I have for you when it comes to exclusively pumping is definitely make sure you have an app or some type of tracking system to keep track of the amount of milk that you pump for the day and how many times did you actually pump and for how long that you pump. I currently use the Baby Tracker app and I freaking love it because it keeps track of how many diaper changes she has, tummy time, how many naps she's taking for the day, as well as my pump sessions. And it has been very helpful for me to keep track of her. My favorite thing about this app is a chart that gives you an average of your pump session. As you can see, I average about 36 ounces for each pump. And I just love this app because it gives you more insights as to how you're doing when it comes to pumping. And it's also good because it tells you when your last pump was and how long your pump was, which is also very important because you want to make sure that you're getting at least 120 minutes per day of pump time. So I really hope this video was helpful for you and that you find these tips useful. If you have any other questions or if I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments and I will definitely respond to you to help you kick off your pumping journey because I know firsthand that sometimes nursing is not as easy as we all expected it to be and sometimes you just need help. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I will definitely get back to you. If you liked this video and you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And hit subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.